for NGOs, a main reviewer of training manual on citizenship and coexistence for, for uh, Iraqi youth. In addition, he has more than 700 articles in, in local Iraqi and international newspaper and magazines about developing democracy, civil society, developing leadership skills. He also served as a lecturer at multiple universities in Iraq and Kurdistan and, and had his own TV and radio uh, show. Uh, Mr. Salam served as an advisor uh, for the Deputy Prime Minister of Kurdistan Regional Government on civil society and youth issues. For now, he's a chief executive a director for Rawanga Foundation and people uh, know Mr. Salam as Abdul Salam Madani. And, and, and we, are, we, are, we are very welcome to our panel, Mr. Abdul Salam. Our last panelist is uh, uh, Mr. Hiwa Afandi, the youngest panelist in our, on our panel, and very informative, very rich CV. He's, 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 he's a kind of dictionary, actually. I, I start with uh, his language skills. He speaks li like six languages, English, German, Swedish, Farsi, Kurdish, and Arabic. Uh, Mr. Hiwa Afandi has a very rich experience in the public service in Kurdistan regional government. He was working, he was a director general at Kurdistan Regional Government Department of Foreign uh, Relations before uh, moving uh, and serving as a KRG head of Department of Information and Technology, DIT, since 2014. He studied computer science at Karl Lister Technical University in Germany and he, he obtained his master's degree in engineering and management of information system from Stockholm Royal Institute Technology in Sweden. Uh, well, under his leadership, DIT has implemented uh, Kurdistan Regional Government wide uh, biometric uh, registration project, which is very well known. I won't make it longer, because, but, 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 but I have mentioned, as I mentioned before, he is really, really representing the future of new generation of Kurdistan. He's, uh, uh, his skills and his bio, uh, his contribution really gives us hope about uh, how the future of Kurdistan will look like. You all you are very welcome to our conference and uh, I will start with Professor Almas Hashmati to present his paper. Uh, professor, you have 15 minutes to cover your subject, then uh, we will be kind of strict with the time. What the thing, th if, if you couldn't cover all the subject, we give you uh, more space uh, in the uh, IQ session, then you can cover uh, the skipped uh, uh, subjects. So the floor is yours, and, and thank, thanks for, for coming again to our conference. Uh, thank you very much for your kind introduction uh, and I thank uh, uh, Dr. Hemant for organizing this conference and inviting me. Uh, now it's very unusual here for economists to give a presentation. Can you please activate my PowerPoint file? Hello? Okay, uh, my talk is about uh, economic stability in Kurdistan region. Uh, next, please. So what I do is first I define what is economic stability, different dimensions of it, and also then I go to situation in Kurdistan region. Next, please. So economic stability, usually we define it as absence of irregularities and fluctuations. Okay, thank you very much. It's, uh, in general, is defined as absence of large fluctuation in the economy. And large fluctuation we have when we have economic and financial crisis. And large fluctuation is in production, in employment, in inflation, and, and uh, exchange rate. Those are the main factors of fluctuation. Then what is defined 
stable economy, the opposite of it is basically economy that grows positively but slowly because population is growing. Humans are greedy. They want to have a higher living standard. And uh, of course, uh, job creation, that is very important. Then government can help to regulate the economy, to make it possible so it's stable and grow uh, optimally. And uh, the objective is here to shed light on economic stability conditions in Kurdistan region. Next, please. So, as I mentioned, economic stability is to have a situation that the economy grow slowly, positively, but without much fluctuation. So we don't face like high inflation or high unemployment rate. And uh, economic stability is necessary because otherwise we cannot fulfill the other objectives uh, when it comes to uh, economic development and also welfare in the society. Uh, then economic stability, how do we measure it? We measure it in terms of low fluctuation in important factors in the economy. That is production, that is employment, that is inflation, and that is exchange rate. So those four factors are the most important indicators of economic stability. Next, please. Uh, inflation is one factor that is very important for economic stability. This picture shows uh, 2019's bill in Zimbabwe, that is $100 trillion Zimbabwean dollar in 2009. It was worth, at, in 2009, just five cents. In 2019, it would be worth only one cent. And that is evidence of irresponsible behavior of government to print money with these high numbers. So that's why economic stability is very important. Next, please. Then uh, I have also some figures that it shows from inflation and unemployment in South Korea, because South Korea is one of the role model countries that United Nations recommends as a model for economic development. If you look at the top one, it shows inflation. And you can see that in 90s and uh, 80s and 90s, there was a volatility in form of high inflation rate. But in recent decades, it has been more or less stable around 2-3%. We need positive inflation to be able to, to uh, come up with policies uh, that is conductive. So zero inflation is no good. We need 2-3% inflation to be able to use it in politics. The lower figure, it shows unemployment. If you look at the left side, Unemployment is very high because of Asian economic crisis. But after Asian economic crisis, the government has stabilized both inflation and unemployment. It means economy is relatively stable. Next, please. Then, in order to achieve economic stability, it is necessary to regulate the economic and the social relations because it's not only economy, but we need good economy to be able to have a good social relations. Then social regulations is to protect individual, to protect families, to protect environment and uh, consumers and of course also producers. So we need uh, social regulation. Uh, economic regulation, it uh, protects employment for instance, it protects investors, it gives them opportunity to, to develop their ideas and projects. And then we need also government regulations because government is representing uh, uh, consumers and producers in the society and they have to play an important role when it comes to, for instance, uh, corporate social responsibilities. Then we have taxation. That is one way of uh, bringing economic policy into the picture to have a a better balanced uh, in terms of uh, inequality, poverty, uh, uh, good health, good education. So we need also, of course, taxation policy because without taxation and without distribution, then we have anarchy. That is a situation that is ruling in U.S. now that 50 percent, 50 persons own as much as 220 million people in U.S. And that is the result of bad taxation policy. 
reducing tax for rich people and imposing tax on poor people. Next, please. Then uh, uh, stability can be local, it can be international, it can be regional, but local economic stability is at the national level. And uh, uh, that is very important because, uh, because of, uh, uh, especially in information technology age, is very important, this national, national level. But of course, global economic stability requires cooperation between countries. And, uh, 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 institutions. Uh, so, uh, in addition to local, we need also global uh, economic stability to provide stability in the economy. So, instability can cause less of travel, like we had global economic crisis some years ago. And uh, instability can negatively affect the welfare of the people. So, that's why we need economic stability. Uh, next, please. Uh, then, uh, uh, we need uh, uh, government. Uh, 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 we need government maintaining economic stability because this is their role. There are some key factors that are important, and that is a fiscal policy, and that is also monetary policy. Fiscal policy, we use it when we have high unemployment rate, for instance. We try to create employment, but it can lead to indebtedness of the government. Monetary policy, this means we try to control inflation, and by controlling inflation, we influence supply of money, printing money. So that's why I showed you the bill with 100 trillion uh, Zimbabwean dollar. But if we have disequilibrium, then we have to achieve equilibrium. Otherwise, we will not, we'll be in trouble. Next, please. This one shows interest rate. That is a policy factor. The upper one is in Korea. The lower one is in Europe. And you can see there is a large decline in interest rate because of global economic crisis, we try to help business to reduce their investment costs to create jobs. So the same tendency in both uh, blocks. Next, please. This figure, it shows uh, exchange rate. Exchange rate are also very important. In Iraq, you have fixed it with dollar. Uh, then next, please. And uh, if we uh, run a bad policy, government policy, it can lead to degree of indebtedness. And you can see there are some countries that are highly indebted to the left. There are some countries that are less indebted to the right. Next, please. Then stability is a multidimensional. It's not only economic, it's not only social. But we have also government stability. We have political stability. We have... Uh, uh, other kind of stability also that we have to take into account. Uh, then political stability, for instance, is basically stability of the government, that there is no uh, violation, no irregularities, and what is important is good governance uh, and uh, effective institutions that bring this kind of stability. Next, please. So now I come to uh, stability in the uh, KRG. We have social, we have economic, political, security, uh, government uh, regulations, uh, central, regional government relations, uh, internal, external, all these dimensions, it embodies uh, the KRG's uh, stability. So changes in political environment, it helps to bring stability, uh, thank you, and it can also lead to instability. So regional government can achieve stability through local politics only partially, that is under its own control. But one part of stability is influenced by decisions in Baghdad, that it makes it unable to achieve full stability. So there is always risk that instability comes from outside. It can be also positive influence, but in general, under circumstances that is existing now, this influence can be negative. Uh, next, please. Then yesterday we uh, heard that uh, good governance and effective institutions are very important. And uh, I was trying to ask a question about uh, Iraqi laws, they are from 60s and 70s, then 40 years of war. And Kurdistan region in 90s and 20s, they established better organizational structure, better, better legal system, 
But now, because of this central regional government relations, we bring back all those laws from 60s and 70s that is not, not really helpful. But that is the way the relationship is. And I wanted to see whether this new relation between central regional will dismantle what you build up or not. That was my question, but now I can ask it uh, uh, to Dr. Abdul uh, Hakim. Uh, then uh, uh, the concept of efficiency of institutions is very important. And in uh, Kurdistan, usually we are not good in uh, uh, institutional structure and organization, neither in legal system. Those two, is, those two factors has been always imposed on us. Uh, then characteristic of good governance is rule of law, legal framework, uh, regulatory body, transparency, accountability, uh, no uh, corruption, participation of people in decision making. Those are important. Next, next please. So development is based on a number of issues. One is development strategy. And this development strategy, the best kind of it is national development-minded strategy that comes from leadership. So that's why leadership is very important, play an important role in national development strategy that has the welfare of the society in focus. But unfortunately, in some cases, we have a business-driven development strategy. So this means the interest of business is the center of the focus, and especially in normal situation, we have government representing people, we have business representing investors, and universities in the between to link these two. But in Kurdistan region, we don't have this situation. We have politics that forms governance, and governance forms, applies the rules and regulations, but at the same time, governance up is ownership of business also. So this means the same person is sitting on three chairs, and that's why the, a lot of focus is on business interests rather than uh, uh, public interest. So I hope this situation can improve. Next, please. So Kurdistan region has grown quite fast. There are many factors that has contributed to this fast growth, but also in recent years there are contributions to slow down because of changes in oil prices, declining oil prices, because of uh, less uh, of self-ruling, uh, uh, and also because of uh, lower tourism, because of we have built too much, uh, that is, uh, uh, we have uh, um, uh, excess capacity. So the question is whether we have reached the bottom of the decline or not. And that is very important to know and have uh, uh, policies toward that. Uh, then uh, there is a disproportionately large and ineffective governance and institutions that we have. So we have to reduce the size of institutions to be able to make it, to give more space to private sector and also to make institutions effective. Okay, thank you. Uh, then uh, in my understanding, it's, uh, uh, in my understanding, uh, what is important is to have an economic plan that is a national interest oriented. We have to stop nomination of people who are based on trust and membership of organization, but nomination should be based on skill and ability. In China, in Japan and Korea, they have a system of high civil servant examination. You can never become a high civil servant if you do not pass an exam. That's why they have so effective institutions. We could introduce this system here. Then we have lo local labor that is not, not uh, effective, cannot compete with foreign companies, and government do not regulate how, much, how many percent of employees should be foreign and how much should be uh, domestic. So that's why, uh, next please. Uh, that's why uh, we could have, uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, for instance, uh, have a diversification of the economy. It is very important to have all three sectors, agriculture, industry, and uh, services. 
develop in the same way, but at the same time diversify the sources of income. And this diversification could be also in areas that we have competitive advantage. Uh, privatization is important, but not uh, over uh, the limits. And we should invest in education, invest in good health, technological capability, uh, good development infrastructure, equality, active participation, inclusive growth and development, and of course, do not forget about uh, environment. Next, please. And uh, uh, I have given some uh, list of areas that we could, uh, uh, we could invest. For instance, uh, trade policy. We need quality control. We need a taxation system. We need redistribution. We need uh, reducing inequality and concentration of assets in few hands. We need national accounting. We need corporate social responsibility. We need to fight corruption. We need to have an inclusive and sustainable growth. And also use of dual currency instead of being tied to only dinar that is out of our control, we could have a dual currency. You can always use dollar and and uh, euro without uh, asking Baghdad or uh, uh, Iraqi Central Bank. Uh, next, please, just Thank half you. a minute. Uh, this is a development of uh, economy in Korea. You can see that in 60 years what they have achieved. About 800 times the economy has grown. Next, please. Uh, this is about uh, uh, income. Income in Korea now is $32,000 per capita. It started from $46 in 50s. Next, please. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, formation of capital, investment in capital infrastructure. Next, please. And this is a uh, uh, degree of uh, government reserves. You can see to the left is Chinese, to the right is European. So European do not save much, but Chinese they do. Next, please. And this is a demographic structure that population is declining and the fertility is low. Next, please. And this shows research and development. You can see that Korea is one of the countries that invest in research and development a lot. And in terms of patent per capita is the highest in the world. Uh, next, please. And those are evidence of good governance can be a good example for here. Thank you very much, thank and I'm very much. sorry for uh, uh, using a couple of minutes thank more time. You. Thank so you, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you for the numbers, for the statistics. Thank you for the precious presentation, really. We have all we enjoyed it. And uh, we move to our second uh, presenter, Mr. Hewa. I think you are also the man of data, numbers, and statistics, right? So we invite you to present your paper. Feel free to use the podium. Or yeah, because you you have. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can you ask colleague please to put the microphone on? I apologize for the inconvenience. Um, if you apologize me, I really don't like to, to be on podium, and um, even though I, it's an honor to be among such a distinguished um, panelist, but I would like to be here if you allow me to. <clears throat> I, I would like to start with the existential questions of uh, why we are here, how the world has got here. So it always brings, my, brings us back to a main question, the philosophical questions of why some countries are so advanced and why some countries and nations are so miserable. Throughout the human history, science and use of technology has been the main reason and power be behind the rise of civilizations and um, uh, great countries. I believe 
no matter where in the world we talk, South Korea, China, Japan, wherever we talk about, the main reason we are here, the world is, has current civilization status, is because the European Renaissance, is because of the European Enlightenment and the subsequent Industrial uh, Revolution. Speaking of which, the Industrial Revolution of our time is digital world, digital connectivity. Now that we know why we are here, that we know how we got here, let's ask ourselves why government around the world use digital services. So we are talking about the drivers of digital transformation here. We no longer talk about e-government or e-services. It's about a citizen-centric, a citizen-centric digital transformation strategy. The drivers are basically economics, as it was like thousands of years ago. So governments around the world would like, depending on at what stage, what maturity level of the um, uh, digitization they are, they have similar goals. Our countries, the main reason for digital transformations are one, budget deficit, second, citizen satisfaction, and three, data for accurate decision making. So now that we know the historical background, we know why we are using digital transformation, let's talk about how to protect it. We are talking about cyber security. Why is it important? And I would like, because the term is so broad, we have such a vague understanding and different opinions about it. If you allow me, I would like you to imagine in your heads an octagon. So a polygon with eight sides and two circles in the middle. It looks like a robot head, if it makes it easier for you to memorize it. The two circles in the middle are data and availability of services. So cybersecurity is about protection of the data and making sure the services are available. With that in mind, let's describe the size of it. Doctor, how much time do I have? Exactly. Thank you so much. So with the, let's start with the first, at the top of the, 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 the octagon. We talk about cybersecurity and infrastructure protection. As governments move to connect physical infrastructure to computerized systems, they require to make sure that these systems are available in terms of data and in terms of security protected. As we speak, our Ministry of Electricity is speaking about installing smart meters to measure the electricity consumption and to manage like diversions of the electricity in different parts of that. The moment we go online, we have to protect it. So protection of the infrastructure is the main priority for the government. In 2017, a malware called NotPetya knocked down the biggest shipment movement in the world, the company Maersk. It caused close to $10 billion damage, according to the White House. The second topic is cybercrime. As we become accustomed to using applications, as they make our life easier with the mobility and so on, our data is also exposed to the world, to the, to the cyber criminals. Protecting this data means that no one should be able to, to hold your data or your services hostage to ransoms. If you remember, a, a malware called WannaCry knocked out NHS a few years ago and asked people for payment. A DDoS attack can cause um, a huge uh, infrastructure damage to, to the world. So cybercrime increases with the, with the extreme increased use of, of, uh, of applications and being connected online. The second topic is law. Our legal system to counter cyber threats is really, really old. And it's not only in our country, which is like, extremely old, as the, uh, some of our officials call it as a uh, dinosaurs uh, era time. It is also old in the, in the European country, and that's why there was this European summit about how to keep up with the private sector. The third part of the, the third uh, topic that I would like to talk about is about um, uh, the uh, privacy. I just draw the, my, my, uh, my polygon I'm forgetting about. The privacy, our privacy, the data that we share. You know, we are talking about the third platform. In the third platform, just 
to explain to you, there are, we have three platforms. We talk about mainframe computers, desktop computers, and the third platform that has started in 2015, Antuna, is about social media, analytics, big data, and so on. So as we share our data, there should be rules and regulations on how to protect the privacy of our people. Too much data is being exposed and too little is anonymized. So using a, a research from MIT and a university in Denmark could successfully re-identify anonymized data based on different parameters back to the original owner. So privacy is a big concern and that's why we have this uh, um, uh, general data protection regulation of the European Union implemented. That is one important aspect. The, uh, the, fifth, the sixth, uh, fifth aspect is the um, Internet of Things. With the Internet of Things, we are talking about more than 20 billion devices worldwide connected using IP addresses. It means a huge amount of data is being generated, a huge amount of traffic is being uh, moved between different network nodes, in addition to 5G, which, which challenges the traditional network models from edge distribution core, it brings the core of network ex exposed to the edge. So security of the uh, Internet of Things is of great importance as they knocked out Twitter, Spotify, Netflix, and New York Times a couple of years in 2016 just because they attacked the infrastructure of a company called Dyn upon which these companies relied. And the sixth dimension that I think our military people will like, in the world, we traditionally had land, sea, air, and space dimension of the, of the warfare. Now we have the sixth dimension, which is called the cyber warfare. The first time a, a cyber warfare could cause physical damage on the ground was in 2007, when the Iranian nuclear facilities in Natanz got knocked out by a malware called Stuxnet. Yeah. Then we come to the norms and new norms of collaboration, which Professor Hishmati uh, so nicely pointed out. We need new ways of collaborations. Some crimes happen across borders. The evidence is, is outside of physical borders. New international norms and collaborations are necessary in order to be able effective against them. And my last point, I think I have two minutes left, right? So the last point is the resilience. Once we design our systems, once we spread these networks, these networks, the, the, uh, the security of them is too much automized. The automation of the security systems also increases the number of false alarms. So new measures such as data fusion, meaning different sets of data are required in order to be able to identify, filter, and highlight the right uh, uh, alarms from the, from the false one, and to mitigate threats. This is, in short, a very, very brief frame and introduction to the cybersecurity. It's a huge field for itself, and there are way more capable and knowledgeable people than me in this field, but that will require diving into one topic of it at a time that will take a couple of days to, to, uh, to talk about and to, to elaborate on it. Thank you very much for your time, and excuse me if I took a lot of your time. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hewa. Thank you, thank you, really. Thank you for the insightful presentation. Well, we move on, and we will ask to Mr. Professor Francis, yeah, to, you have f uh, 15 minutes, Professor. Thank you. Zohar Halam, Ka Emro Lem Conferenzada Amada Boom. It gives me great pleasure to be here and to return where, uh, to the, the university. Uh, pleasure to see all former and, and current students and all friends and colleagues. Thank you so much to the conference organizers uh, for making this happen. Uh, my topic is on the sensitive topic of Peshmerga reform. Um, and I have a paper, um, title of which is 
the Peshmerga, uh, party militia, constitutional force, or hybrid security actor. And with a focus on security sector reform in a fragile federal state. Uh, due to very, you know, limitations of time and so on, and also we've had discussions uh, yesterday which have come some of, covered some of the material, I'm going to focus on certain aspects of the paper. Namely, uh, firstly, as we've, we've, we've been talking about, this conference and the mood of the conference is not to focus perhaps on what's been difficult in the past, but to look forward to what we can do now and going forward to create more positive outcomes for the people, Kurdistanis, Iraqis, and so on. So I'm gonna concentrate on those aspects, but just, it is necessary, it always, to perhaps outline some definitions, some initial definitions of what I'm talking about. Um, also, it is, uh, we know, it's not been so easy, uh, the issue of Peshmerga. The Peshmerga, it's a very important and sensitive topic in some ways because as Faisal Harami has written, um, there's a common saying in Kurdistan region of Iraq that without para, like uh, that force, or, or shak, which is kick, so money and, and force, you can't really do anything. Uh, so the possession of a coercive force by different political parties and so on, regions, maybe families, individuals, is a very important aspect and perhaps gets really difficult sometimes to, to, to engage in that. Um, so the other aspect of this is a limitation to my, my paper, my presentation, is I'm focusing mainly on security sector reform in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. There, as, as a component of the um, ongoing project of the development of a federal state in Iraq. We've already alluded to uh, yesterday, uh, federalism as a field of study and uh, has a number of uh, aspects to it and it was even, the phrase was mentioned, it's something which I worked on with a former colleague. Uh, uh, a phrase was mentioned, the paradox of federalism, which we now have research students who are working on this topic. The paradox of federalism, in the same way that federalism, Iraq, I think it without, goes without saying, is, does belong to that category of states and societies, which is a deeply divided society. Through its process of state formation, uh, yesterday we heard about all, all of that and the role of Britain in that, so I'm not going to go too much into the details. But obviously Peshmerga developed from that as forces aligned with certain families and tribes uh, and, and coming through and then this is the, in a sense resisting the process of state formation under which the Kurds first of all found themselves divided after World War I into four uh, new states, or, or three, you know, we got Iraq, Syria, uh, Turkey became the rump state out of the Ottoman Empire, Iran carried on from the Qajar, uh, and then became the Pahlavi dynasty, um, became divided and became a territori territorially concentrated minority within those states, um, and found them in these artificial states Although all states are to some extent artificial, I think it's fair to say that Iraq is one of the most artificial states. And also there's the, the issue of the relationship with the external powers who were both involved in the formation of this state, I speak namely, of course, Britain, uh, uh, and their ongoing attitude of those states and the international community. When we say international community, of course, what does that actually mean? It can be interpreted actually, it's mainly those very powerful states who set the norms and values of the international system. 
Uh, so they are still concerned and uh, about what goes on as the what goes on in in, in fragile states can spill over uh, and affect their own security. But they have a vested interest in what in going in what former state developed. And since the uh, we've gone over the history yesterday, uh, Peshmerga were involved in first of all resisting this internal incorporation and assimilation into the Iraqi state, which adopted, as many of the other states did, uh, following Russia, the Russification of all the minorities within the Russian Empire. So Turkey, uh, in a sense, also adopted that, that in terms of identity, there was to be no other identity about a centrally imposed authoritarian identity. Um, and in a sense, this is what the Peshmerga involved in resistance. And I come at this point, so they, were, they have this anti-regime factor. And at this point, I'd like to also highlight aspects of the notion of hybrid security actor. If we turn to a dictionary, a reputable dictionary, we find that the word hybrid involves the combination of two, of two things, maybe often two dissimilar things. So they are at the same time one on the other hand, something. And sometimes it's those paradoxes which aren't easy to resolve. The Peshmerga, with their origins aligned to particular families and so on, uh, became an anti-regime force, so anti against the regime of uh, Saddam Hussein and the fights against them. Uh, and then at the same time, in the new federal Iraq, have become uh, an ill-defined part of, and it is contested, much of what we talk about in these areas are subject to debate and discussion, but has become, under the Constitution, there is the various articles of which you all are aware, I'm quite sure, that the Constitution allows the region to have its own regional guards. So in that sense, the Peshmerga can be seen as a sort of part of the constitutionally mandated security forces. But they maintain this both things. Um, and so if we consider uh, where the Peshmerga have gone to, in, as I say, my focus is on the Kurdistan region of Iraq. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is that the, Kurd the Peshmerga have been aligned with particular sections. And so this focus is not easy. I'm, I'm going to um, also, another thing about the federal state, which, we're try which is the project which is being worked on, is, is federalism as a political form to bring, to hold together deeply divided societies and deeply divided states. And so the Constitution, which was negotiated, was all part of that project. But as I think I mentioned in a question I posed yesterday, uh, the Constitution, as initially um, uh, discussed and, and, and negotiated, had the form of words which were, as in many negotiations, sometimes you may take the easier issues or slightly easier, or you might leave things slightly fuzzy or ambiguous to allow all negotiating parties to uh, sign up to it. But at some point, thorny issues need to be resolved. Um, and so that's really, I think, the context of fed fragile federalism and how to build that. And is it possible to build a, f uh, a federal state, which this comes to the paradox of federalism, which can maintain the territorial integrity of an existing state because the international community, the great powers, nowadays they have a low appetite for secession, for the creation of new states. Can you create structures which enable diversity uh, and autonomy without it being a stepping stone on the road to secession? Um, so just to, uh, after, and we've talked about, I think the details are fairly well known of the, there were a number of attempts at unifying the Peshmerga starting in the 1991. 
and then also before and after ISIS and the referendum. And I'm not going to go dwell on that as the focus of our conference is looking to the, the future. Essentially, the Peshmerga, which were, there was a ministry of Peshmerga, which had some, but then there are KDP and PUK. Um, and it, the, what happened in the outcome, the aftermath of the referendum, in terms of external powers, was that forces supported, mentored by America, Britain, uh, had the prospect that they were coming into uh, kinetic contact. So this, is, this was the issue. Um, so the focus has been, um, and those powers like Britain and America, they seek to, they have a vested interest in Iraq and the Kurdistan region as a important part of that federal state to promote stability because if there's absence of stability, uh, you lead to ungoverned space which would allow such uh, actors as Daesh to take over that space and threaten their security and their interests in the region. Um, so they've, as you uh, may be aware, of, are involved uh, with this process of Peshmerga reform. Um, and notably, the Peshmerga in the future, the Peshmerga reform plan to which I now turn. There is a multi-year reform plan of approximately five to 10 years, which consists of 35 recommendations prepared by the US, UK, and Germany, uh, with the goal of unifying and professionalizing the Peshmerga. The development of this specific plan was initiated following a request in 2015 by the then president and commander in chief of the Peshmerga. Uh, but it wasn't until a couple of years that a fully developed plan was devised and developed. However, the events of 2017 and the aftermath of the September referendum showed the mismatch between the plans on paper and the reality on the ground. As under the stress of that situation, the Peshmerga basically reverted to their lines of command and also, as you know, uh, part of this is lines of loyalty which is based on, in the end, there's a certain element of patronage and patron-client relationship uh, to that. Um, so the October 16, so before the events of October 16, there were 14 unified Peshmerga units. 12 were formed out of mixed KDP and PUK forces by the Ministry of Peshmerga, whilst the United States created and fully funded two more. Following those pressures, these units simply disintegrated. So the October 16 events left six unified units. And, okay. What have been the steps uh, of this reform? And I think we can focus on, in these things, process small achievable tasks, um, which might help the inst institutionalization and professionalization. There's been an emphasis on developing the human resources which could deliver the internal capacity for reform by setting up a, a directorate of reform and a reform board within the Ministry of Peshmerga. Um, for, secondly, agencies involved in Peshmerga development are also focusing on military skills and effectiveness, building partner capacity, part of which involves inculcating a training mindset. And these might seem small steps, but if you can train together, if you can, can meet, um, that starts to build trust. And I think people who know these kind of in touch with what's going on is very much we're in the trust building phase. Trust building is a very important element and we should be really celebrating the fact that if there is a program of meetings, of training and people attending, then this is much better, that this involves communication, building bridges, personal relationships. So this is all positive. Um, and th there's been a development of an organized 10-week basic curriculum with regular freshers. Uh, one author talks that the evidence supplied by the ability of a group of Peshmerga to perform a particular physical test, jumping jack test, as well as the, uh, is as much as what's involved in security sector reform Focused, uh, then focused on accountability. Another suggestion uh, is to work on an issue which appears to be non-controversial for all parties. 
the development under the command of the Ministry of Peshmerga of non-lethal capabilities, so a medical corps with helicopters and so on. Also a dedicated uh, communications unit, as during the war with Daesh, the conflict with Daesh, many Peshmerga commanders used civilian network mobile phones. And another strategy for reform is to standardize the weapon system of the Peshmerga under the control of the Ministry of Peshmerga with NATO standard equipment. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so just to wrap up, I think um, I've briefly uh, overviewed some of the uh, components of this. And to keep the time, yeah, and yeah. we will give you a chance to come yeah, up at this point. In so the thank, you for, uh, thank you for listening much. and uh, look forward to any questions. Thank you, yeah. thank you thank very you. much for, for the informative really, presentation. Thank you, Professor. Well, uh, we move to our last panelist, Mr. Abdusalam, Kaka Abdusalam. ببورش من تو هلال دو ماهی که تو خودان مالی چین گفت برای ازید تانیم زورس پاس زورس پاس تدبیت بیره تدبیت بیره البیره زورس پاس دکتور گرم ممنونی جنابیت هم هی بیدارم امیدوارم دو بیتا خیتامو نسک نه بیتا خیتامو نسک استش برادرانی مترجم آلن ربطی لنتل سوپ لگل پرفیوم چه اگر وابو برادرانی مترجم اتوانم بلن وکو ربطی نیوان ترکتر و مسجله سال 2008 بو ل آمریکا بو این هندک ل برادر روشن بیرکان و نوسرکان بو تیان فلم که چیروکی دکتر سوسا با بچین سیری که این بوی فلم کت یعنی چیروکی که باسی ناوکه هارتون هیرز دهو بو هارتون فیلی که ل ناو در استانیک داره دیتو دچیتن پروژه کلا روزانه گل گلی کی گیش که برگوی تا پریتن هوارک لی دیتن او گلی گیش که فیل او قناعت بای دروز دبید هارتون که اما نفری که کسی که لسر او گله هیا و قناعت که زیاد لیدید که او مجرد نفری کنی رنگ جهانی که تاو لسر ام گله گیچ که ها بیتن فعالتن ابی من و که مسئولیتی که اخلاقی یارمتی او خلقه بدن بگین مشوینه چون که او گله گیچ که دید دچیتن اوانا تیری اک دخوات آجال اک قود ادات اشتن او او دا او خلقه امریتن اخین کتن او نا بیتن فاو اراده باید دروز دبی تا بگین تشویقی سقام گیر بی توشی ام وضع شرنه بیتن به برداومی ناسقام گیر بیم. طبعا فیلم کواب شانه داد چی رو که کواب شانه داد فعلا جهانی کی تواو لسر ام گلگیچ که هیا و او هواره لکری حاکمی ولات کدیتن و ایا به فعلا وضعی که و بدو زیت و تجربه کل تواصل لگر جهانی در بکاتن و خودی ام جهانه، ام ولاته، ام عرده، ام شاره، ام ولاته هر چی بیت ناوکی خوی گنجاندیه با شوازه که لگل او وضع خوی بگنجن چون که گله که هوا دینی تو دباتن ولو همو وضع ده و همو چالنجانی که هنه بتوان خویان سقام گیر کن، برقرار کن، خویان گنجاندیه هنجا رو کات کسی ایرم کد بیرم و وضع کردستان، عراق، خات، ولاتکانی ناوچه که و زور جا راستی شروعی مرغاتی زور جار و کویکن و جوکا کان و کویکن، ف وادی تبرچام لکردستان لعراق علی قلی سیم باسی و وضعه کن لیره. اما یان چاروانی فیله کی عاقلی دل ناسکین و یکی کی باش بیتن تاس وضع من سقام گیر کاتن. یان ابی ناو خودی خوان دا عالیاتی و بدوزی نوا وضعی کی و دو بدوزی نوا که خوان بگن جنی لگل او وضع ناس قام گیره که بشه یک برای دکتری اشاره پیدا لچندین آسیتر هشت به نسبت ایم و هر زمانی کی تر یعنی راستی چون بتوان خوان بگن جنی لگل او وضع علی اقل سقام گیری کی و خوی بگن جنی لگل او وضع و کمد خلق تا من باسی چوار محوری سرکی بکم فرمی سرکی اتوانم بلهم قسکانی من هم امید دارم لوت شوار چوایه تحلیل بکرتن و ببیسترن یا کمی آن من خوام ما بینم کم رو بکی متفاهم گش بینم رش بینیم و کاتی کسیری وضع که کم و گره از بکم که مسئولیتی منه و ولات مسئولیتی منه هندی رش وضع که خرابش بیتن هزم زیادی لیکه تابش دارم علاج بکی نکلی راکم دو 
یکیک ل بنما هر سرک یکانی استقرار سقامگیری لهریم کردستان لعراق دبی موضوعی لوان بیتنو کمالگای مدنی گویان با بگیره چون که ممکنه ببنا اگر یک با سقامگیر بون یان با تک دان و مظاهرات یا چند روزه بلگی کی جوری ل سر ام موضوع بنا و بهاری عربی بلگی کی جوری ل سر ام موضوع گنجان اگر نین است و وضع ک شرده بیتنو مؤشرات کان و عزه حنبو گوتمان هبوی نوهن است و این دچ که همو جریم او ببورن لو وشي علم او درويه بجنجان افروشين كا ايوا اين دي سركل دي اين دن اجر جنج او رو نيتن بجدار نبيت ايماني بايست او دوار روشا كا نبيتن سركل دي تشيب كاتن را اكاتن وكو مؤشرات يا وضع دي سان هن لبرجاوي ايما وجنجان اشتناو كو مالغاي مدني زيات الخويان ادوز نوا وناو حركات تطوعي خويان ادوز نوا ناو مؤسسات تعليم يا غربيان بمانوي او بيوان دي دروس بكين ليرا خويان دمي لبر او من لو زاويه او فريمي سيما لو زاویه سیری مشهد که که مهمومان پیک و دو روزه و غیری او برزانی باسی و زعیراق و کردستان کن هر یک لمال زاویه سیر دکاتن بلام او زاویه که بگو من محتاج رویه که گشتگیرین با واقع که من امیو لزاویه کمالگای مدنی و لوان سیری مشهد که بکم چون نمه بش دارین و کو صفت پاور یک صفت ایلمنت یک لم وضعده که ابینم زور زور گرین گاو پردی پیواندیه دروز ببیتن فعالم ایمان هولستيك سلوشنز نبحلولي ترقيع يوبينا كردنو اوانا چوكا رنگا بمسكنك علاج وضعك مؤقت بكي بلان بودريش غاين او انفجاراتانا دروز دبنكا هنا چوارم فريمو كوتاي من نابين مشكلة عراق و كردستان نداعش نا موضوعي اسعاري نفتا نا اطلاقا مشكلة سراكي بتقديري من سوء ادارة المواردة بواتايكي جورتر سوء الحوكمة الحكم الرشيد نيا قد قفرنسا كلا وازا إما نمان توانيا إداريكي باشي مواردي خومان بكين وموارد باسي مواردي مالي مادي وبيقومان ورقم يكيش مواردي بشرية خلقي إما كومالا راستيك يكيك لوانا زور قسو وسائق مانا ووضع كردستان وعراق ببنت لبواري دوكيومنتا كان كهمانا إما زور مهمين لسر ورقا فمثلا يكك لوانا السياسه الوطنيه للتشغيل، الاستراتيجيه الوطنيه للتربيه والتعليم العالي، الاستراتيجيه الوطنيه للشباب، تقرير التنميه البشريه الوطني، رؤيه فيجن 2020 ايرا، اتوين خومان بخلطين، دوري بارش بخلطين، كيما زور باشين، بلام لسر ورق، يا ساكان يما زور جوان، لارضي واقع ده هموشتك بما لا لاتن عكسي وضعك. لا فيجن 2020 هريمي كردستان قالتن سيتيزنز كام فيرست طبعا اذان مبررات يا وضع دين وانا بلام شي مؤشرات معناها كسيتيزن ار كامينج فيرست زور ضعيفه حقيقه فيكك لراسيا كان لسر ورقي مجوان لارضي واقع داي مجوانين دو جنجان لسر اسيا عراق بنجا ونو لصد لدانشتواني عراق كردستان ضمنا لنوزه صال برو سرن معدلاتي بطالة على الاقل اوي رسمي باسي شازه تا بيستيك ده كان يعني بلس ماينس هيك بو صالانه واواني غير الرسمي باسي زيات اللسي لصد اكم نسبه مظاهرات مؤشرك وواضحه كما او او شانلا فرميه شفافه معلنه ريسبونسيف ك جي بيجر انه غلام بدنا وعلى الاقل ايمانيه فلا بلا احتقان دروز زبيد لا يجنج لا يكون القى مدني او قنوات ثانيه بو حوار لقل صانع القرار فباشرين شوين بوي او تنفيس بكت خوي در بخطر اي خوي در ببريد شقامه فحل قمعنيه راسي حل اوي قنواتي جفتوغو تا ام ام حوار والب كاتن كيشا كان شارع سرب بن اجر نشتا سر شقام ودواتر او وضعي كيشتا استهاي بحساب حل دبيتن بلام كيف كردني دنجا كان واتاي اوانيا دنجا كخويني مجرد من ناموي هواركا ببيستن بجنجاني ايما ديسان هست با او اكد كمعزولة لبروسيسي بنياتنان وبشداري بي كردن وهستنا كتن اصلا كاو بشي كلو بروسيسا تا بجدا تا ايماني بوضع كبيت بكار اهين ريد بالي بلان بشي كنينا لبروسيسا كا ويكك لمؤشرات يا موضوع ديسان موضوع كوشا و کوچ کات که در روزبول دو هزار و سیزده و دو هزار و چهارده خواص عکر دستان اقتصادیان زور زور باش بود. اما تقریبا لقمه بود بدایتی مشکل کان بود. و آوکاتش باس من دکرد. اندو باش خلقی مثلا موصل انبار صلاح الدین کوچ بکن مفهوم اتوانی انتی بگین وضع که بس بوهی کر دستانش اولی شاول در روز بو. چون که اوز دیسان مؤشری کی بقوتره. او حالات استقراری که ما باس لیکن لسر ارزی واقع اصلا نفسیانیش رویای امکانجا بو است و آینده. سقام گیر نیه 
خوی لیره نا جوزیته و لبرای او چیتن برای او پیناسی خوی لدره نا لما و حل بس علم او مؤشری که 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 شیک لنا و جواق ده هیا هزی کی طارد هیا لنا و ایما ده پی علتن بچو زیاد لنا و ایما که هزی کی جاذب بین او گنجا بینین بو خومان ارتفاع نسبة معدلات الانتحار و بخوي مؤشري زياد بويا لهريم كردستان و لعراقش بيقومان موضوع مخدرات زياد بويا مؤشري لسر أم موضوع دي سان قضي الجريمة والجريمة المنظمة هندك وطبعا زياد تريش ليدت هندي او باسمان كردية بيش دا صال و صالانا ام موضوع هرباس اكريتون هرباس اجدكين چونكا اقر فريا نكوين أو موضوع تفاقم دبيتن بقوي نقرتن لي أو نبيت كوضعك كحل دبيت العكس هو الصحيح تماما تالا إطاري مشكلة من انتوزي باسي حلول بكين أو مؤشرات وضعك دي سانا للمؤشرات كان كافية بس يرينا الشريك أخبار بكين هندك لقاءات لقل أو جانا بكين كافية إما بزاين وضعك شونا وإما دي سانا لين أو أنا قياداتي إيستا وآيندا أو وضع قياداتي وإيمانيا بولاتي بوشي وازي وأمانة ولا تسليم أوان بكين. هندك لو حلولنا كتر سرك يك مقاربة يك أبروش يك لسر سيكوش يك خوي دبينتن مقاربة يك إداري تعليمي اقتصادية لإداري مقصد موضوع حوكمة ك أو ودوبارة موضوع اقتصادية كإشارة توزيع بيادة وموضوع تعليم وبروردة یکی که لحول هر سرکی کان که وکو دسپی که کار خال بندی بکن وکو پرکتیشنری باسی موضوع بکم که ایم پیوستی من بقیاده که رؤیایی که بیتن برای کوی دچین لکوی خامان دبینین دوای دا بعضا صال توقیت که کری دارن و کاتی که الان قیاده باسی یک شخص نیه باسی اراده یگلیک دکه ایم پی که وکو بنا و هندک بالای و هندک نخیر دارنن لمدرید بون سرکو عفوا وزیری در اسپانیا سر عهدی ماریا خوسی اثنار باسی وضع عراق و کردستان و وضع من دکتر من یکی کلوب سیارم لیکن گفتم باشه اگر جناب تان تانه و تمثالیک دروز بکن خاصا نیو نقلیه کی دموکراتی تان هیا تمثالیک بو کسیک دروز بکن لنا و راستی مادرید دا تمثالیک هی که دبیتن شانزی پی اکن که او اداره او نقلیه کی دیگه گفتم راستی مت مثالی شخصی که من نیه لما كون الله نخبي سياسي ومثقف واديب وهنرمند وورزجفان وجفاكم سيفيل واعلاميين كوبو نوا كون الله يسس ماندانا وكون الله نوز ماندانا هندك بالي كوبو نوا لسري وهندك نا واوانا ما والي كرت ك هيدي هيدي همو يسكان اما بالي اما اما برو بيش ببن هيدي هيدي بالام لسري غا راسك وهندك لو نيانا كدوبارة نمان قررنا باش نك إما هنقابك برو بيش دشين ده هنقاو برو باش دشين خلاصة نهنقاو إما نو هنقاو طرح مان داية فأم قيادة باسي باسي أم أم إجماعاك إن بيك وكوبنا ورؤيايك وادروس بيتن بوائن ده تصور ده كم أو فكري كدروس بود واي دو هزار وسي مانجي شوار رخاني رجيمي بعز بس تصور ده كم ديسان سياق عراقي مجالي زور بينا ده شو كونو موزج الأفغانستان إش تطبيق كرا كموضوع مجلس الحكم رؤيائي كي مشترك لها مو أطرافي بقوتي تمثيلي شارعي عراقي وكردستانية كان مجال بين أدرى وان ده حرق المراحل زوزو بشين براه هالو جاردن زوزو مجلس وطني انتخاء زوزو بعد دستوره كدروس بكين حوارك تنزيج نبو حرق مراحل بوزيات اللي وي شكلي النقلة الديمقراطية بو ولا براو عقد اجتماعية كدروس نموي دكتور حيدر باسي كرد حوارك منزج نبو ديسان لسر ورقة زور جوانا بلام عمليا متمانك لوينيا اگر مجال بدرا با استش نشیه بچیدن آن نموزجی که ما علاین ایلا آن نموزج دموکراتی که است های خوان لگلی بگن جنین تصور دکم ما وای که هتیم مراجعه موضوع بکن مل باش نه چهار دق آکی زور باش چهار تا مازن بود چهار تا مشکلیت داریم درست باز دکتر فایده القیاده بس قیاده باسی شخصی کنیا باسی عقلی کی قیاده دیا خوب بینه ولی دور بری رؤیایی کی واضح و خال بندی هدیه دی بیش نو ابدیت بکریم بر او کی اچین موضوع گنج ببیت محور تنمیه اگر فعلا امانه آینده ها بیتن او گنج قیاده آینده لگل هر حوالیک لسر هر آسیک و هر وزارتیک هر پلانیک موضوع گنج و بونی گنج و متمانه گنج با استا و آینده ابی بشک بیتن لم لم بريا بروسيسي برياردانا و بلانا موضوع تربية و تعليم و موضوع مناهج و چون والبكين او گنج و زور باسي موضوع اقتصاد کرا اما هندك مناهج من هيا گنجك تخرج ده بیتن هندک معلوماتی نظری پی آمادنیه بو بازاری کاری پیش بی صال چجا او تکنولوژی اما باس لی دکین هر اطلاق نیاز دیسان هندک محاضرات باس من کدی اما استعثور صناعی رابعه 
و او دي سنه او دراساتنا الين اوي او كاتا كاتي كثوري بريطاني صناعي دروزبو او ملتاني او كات فريا خويا نكوتن استل دولته فقيره كان استش همان او بسياره دي اوي فريا الثوره المعلوماتيه نكويتن بوص صاليتر لو وضع ما بين الاخرين موضوعي اشراك المجتمع المدني لبروسيسي بريار دادا المجتمع المدني زور مقبول كاتي كابيتا اغاسا وخيبت خيبت تخيبتها بين النونان خواردن واوانا كوبونا وبوشتانا مطلوبه صانع القرار ديان هينيتن شو كباري دري بويدينيتن بلا كاتي كابيتا باش داري كد لصناعه القرار ما ما موضوعي ما في مروف همو جار او خارج قوس او بانك ناكرت وباوريش بينك وتخوين ايش دكريت ومجتمع مدني همو جار هو توزيك لي راس ايروني لبغدا ولا هريم كردستان أو مؤسسيك تنظيمي كاري ريخرا ونا حكومي كان أكاتن سربا جورترين وبرسترين هرم لنا وحكومة ده يعني مفارقيك زور زور سيرة وإشي إشي رقيبك وأحزابي سياسي كأوان بدرجة كم مسؤول لسرتك داني وضع عراق وكردستان أوان خوان با مخلص تر دادن لكم الجاي مدني وعلين ما يما مراقبة يتوب كأن وقت وان أجندة كي خارجية تبيتن وواضحة وإدارة أجندة خارجية لنا هريم كردستان ده وضعية شونا موضوعي دي سان جنجاني اما كعلى قلب توان مشاريع كتشوف باش يكتب مقاربه اقتصاديه جنجاني اما اجر اجر قطاع حكومي باقتصادي كيري عينه توان استيعابيا بكاتن نتوان استيعابيا بكاتن على الاقل والي بكريت تنشيط قطاعي خاص بكاتن واش دي سان قيزور هل اجيريت انا وبريز انا باس يعني كل ديانا ما يبش بنا او توقيتي من بو من بو خوم دانا بو تكاتم خلاص زوس باس فالم قياداتي اما رئيس داران قياداتي اما تكام وايه لقال او بريزانه لقال كوم القاي مدني ولقال جنجان خاصه دانشن قفتو غويك بكن بيك وبكن هند قناعات تابريار بدن اجر اتانوي ايوا واما بمن لا يستولى عند دا وزوس باس ببرستان زوس باس ثانك يو فيري ماتش وي ويل موف تو اور لاست two sessions in the first session will be for k and uh, it's, it will be a, a q and a uh, session we take three questions in the first round please uh, dear distinguished guests ask one short questions please don't make any explanation or short presentations you will have time uh, in the break time to discuss face to face any issue that you are interested to with, with uh, our panelists and the, the last session will be for the final remarks dr Heman will uh, uh, end up this conference with the final remarks so in the yeah we, we, we take yeah please yes is, yes the lady in the beginning زور سباس اما دو روجا من يعني مثال راديك بوردي متابعي ايشا كاني ام دو روجا مكردوها زور زور دستان خوش هوا دارم صالانا زانكو كاني هريم بابتي اوا بابيز ناو بناو بخنا بردست كوملقا براسي بابتك بريتيا لا استقام جيري لا كردستان ولا عراق طبعا مجالي مناقشة بداخل زحمة يعني تعليقات أبو بلام هم ما يستا لا دوسيا جملة بيلم لا آخر شدة بأكم كاج عبد السلام دستي خوش بيه باش باش شكر جنجاني خست نوبابتي إلمنت كاني سقام جيري بداخوا لما وي أمدو الرجاء غيري كان جملة جنبه لبنيله كا بس جن ويكساني جندري وكاري جري لما سلي سقام جيريا جملة نب تنها جنك لو بنيله بو هرخوش يبدو بربو انجا همو ازانا كمسالي بارودوخ جنان وبجداريا بوتا بابتي اجلسر استيني ودولتي لقراري سيانزا بستوبينج ما مستزور سباس وسطلا صد من لاكالتوما جنيش جحيليش سطلا صد من دولة ما الدكتور هيمنيش داكا براستي بسينجاكي بارفراوان او وار بجراتا 
براستی من دنگیم لگل دنگی تو ها کردستان در بید باشتر جم بناست در بید نه تنها ای کوالتی ها بلکو شیرین که در بید شیرین که ها بدن صد در صد لگل تو ما زور سپاس از دانم سنگ تان فراوانه بایی زور ممنون زور سپاس ممنونی تو اینه بله Yeah, we, we, we take the, the guy in, in well, the, the second row, yeah, from the second row, yeah. Okay. Come on. Thank you very much for the panel, and I have a question for Mr. Uh, Francis. Uh, especially he, uh, he talked about the equipment and uh, the status of NATO, of equipment for Peshmerga. But for example, how a non-state actor, for example, as Kurd, uh, for example, on the force as Peshmerga attached to Kurd, for example, can bring equipment, for example, from, uh, from, from, the, from the foreigners, from the American. As you know, now, it's not a classical war. It's, most of the war are, are drone wars, are uh, by, by, the, by, the, by the planes. So it's not a classical uh, fighting. So how, for example, and still Peshmerga just uh, focusing on the unity, uh, unity of the Peshmerga. And now a day, uh, soldiers are not important enough as before. So it's, it's all, all about uh, equipment, but still, for example, we are in a poor situation because we are not uh, state actors, and non state actors, for example, as, uh, cannot uh, require, for example, a plane, drones, for example, cruises. And now, a cruise, for example, can be stronger than a thousand uh, Peshmerga or soldier. So I just I want to comment. So we will finish from this side, then move to this side. Will we take the last question, maybe? Are you a student? Are you a student? Stu we, we, we need really one student. Student, any of you? Well, OK, so we, take, we give you a chance. I promise to give you a chance, guys. Yeah, so yes, he's hiding himself. Yeah, you got you, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, yeah, next round, in Hello. the next round. Thank you very much. Uh, as a quick comment to this lady, uh, we Kurdish men are known to have, uh, to get most of our support from the family and uh, most of our power, and we are getting uh, equipped by women at home. Oh, so that's why we are also like part of them and even our decisions. I have some, uh, one question for Mr. Hiwa Afendi. Uh, Mr. Hiwa, uh, as we have somehow uh, got closer to a conclusion that uh, stability and any terrorism and whatever issues we have and crisis in this country uh, could be solved with good governance. And good governance requires effective decision making. And eventually, as we are living in the uh, modern age and in a dig digitalized world, uh, IT can have a great role in enforcing and empowering the decision making and how effective these decisions could go. Uh, I, my question is, does KRG or does your administration has a database that can help decision makers to depend on? For example, saying how much money each, uh, how much, what budget each ministry has and it goes down to different projects. And if, if yes, and then how did that help the good governance in Kurdistan? And if not, what are the challenges that uh, you faced in order to build the system for good decision making? And at the same time, is there also, I assume there isn't because I haven't uh, faced that in this region yet, is there any system or why there isn't such a system that people react to the given projects and government follows their reaction and the uh, reaction and response of people and discuss their issues, digitalizing issues. Because I assume every house in Kurdistan has access to a digitalized world and uh, Thank you. I think the question is good. Well, maybe we start with Mr. Abdul Salam. You have no comment? I think he, he, ag he agreed with you already. <laughs> um, yeah, Mr. Hewa, yeah, you can, yeah. Yeah. Uh, microphone? Yeah. yeah. It was an excellent question, uh, which is extremely important that is observed by the audience here. 
there is one fundamental problem with underdeveloped country. See, from the 1600s, in Sweden, they have something called a, a population register. The initiative was started by a, a Christian bishop who asked all the priests under his supervision to, it all started in a, in a city called uh, Tartu, I think, it's part of Finland now. By 1749, the entire Swedish population was registered. And then the other countries followed the footsteps, Netherlands, Belgium, which back up, then it got independence from Netherlands afterwards. Um, Iceland is the first country in the world with a centralized population register due to its size of population. It's only 150,000 back in 1953. The problem of our miserable countries, and excuse my choice of words, but we are, we don't have strong documents upon which we can create digital identities for our citizens to deliver them digital services. For a digital service, to be able to interact with the citizen, there should be a mechanism of authentication digitally in place. That answers the question why the KRG did the biometric project in 2016. So you don't have a population registry digitally for the entire population in Kurdistan, between five to six, seven million people. You don't have time to register all of them because we were under pressure. We started taking a slice of the population that mattered most. So we registered 1.2 million people who were on the government payroll. Why? So that we can first have the accurate data for decision making, payroll data, and second, we can add uh, digital services. So digital services cannot be deployed if you don't have accurate data. To have accurate data, there are some infrastructure projects to be planned and implemented. And these projects, first of all, they are cross-cabinet initiatives. It takes more one cabinet to implement. And second, it requires consistency. The biometric registration project gave you the data so that you know, for example, when you spoke about the, the, the Peshmerga uh, uh, professor. So I can tell you based on, on that uh, uh, database, we know that 7, 876 billion Iraqi dinar is our monthly budget, out of which 691 billion goes to employee salaries. And imagine this number. And out of this, 49% goes to military and only 51% goes to the civilians. In terms of numbers, the breakdown, um, excuse this, this were, uh, the numbers are, let me just quickly break down this. Survey. The problem with the military, in the military service, 30% of the salaries is base salaries, and 70% is allowances, which means when they go to retirement, suddenly from $2,000 a month, they will get only three, $400. This is a huge problem. So the databases and population registries are the fundamental projects that give you data for accurate decision makings upon which you can create services. So uh, what you mentioned with a, a, a service that the citizen can interact with the government, it is a service, but we need to prioritize because we are in a, in a like, we will, the way we are moving now, and that's exactly what I agree with, with uh, Dr. Abdul Salam Madani, that we should not paint the future very rosy. If we continue like this, in four years, our payroll will be close to one billion, one, one, uh, one billion dollar a month. That's required to, to pay. We don't have that money. Why? Because we are relying completely on Baghdad to pay that. So we are extremely vulnerable. And that's why our priorities right now is downsizing the government the right way. Look into the military sector, look into allowances that are legal or legally paid, and look who is doing what in the government. So downsizing the government will give you more money because 80% of your budget is going to, to salaries and 20% goes to operation and the investment, which is absolutely disaster. Thank you. So thank, thank you, you so for, much. Thank you for your answer. Professor, you have any comment? Very yes. short one. You are running up time, yes. really. Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, I have an answer to the lady's uh, question about gender equality. I actually 
was not able to say clearly my presentation, but I had equality and fairness there. <clears throat> and I can admit that women participation and women perspective on development that is very much respected and evidence showed that women contribute to education, good health, and also prosperity and well-being. So without women, we wouldn't be here. I have four daughters and I support their development. So I am a, 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 not a gender biased person. I am gender supportive. And then uh, part of this uh, sustainable development goal, the gender equality and gender participation is extremely uh, uh, very important. So that is uh, something we have to take into account. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for the excellent question on, um, on the Peshmerga and non-state actor. Um, yes, it's, it definitely is an issue. Uh, you said that uh, there's limitations if there's focus on unification and um, training. Uh, and in fact, I, I, as I understand it, one of, the sort of, one of the justifications sometimes given for the independence referendum was that if the Kurdistan region was an independent state, then it could draw on all kinds of different kinds of money and under international law would be easier for it to receive weapons and so on, uh, you know, and so on. Um, and indeed, I think when I mentioned about law, one that I mentioned that key, you know, many of these issues are contested. Um, one person, one uh, international law academic argues that under international humanitarian law, the federal government in Baghdad is entirely responsible for the Peshmerga. So, it, you know, and then you get into that issue that uh, external countries, uh, they, they say, well, we, we're only going to supply arms to the uh, federal government in Baghdad. It's for them to hand on to the Peshmerga to fight against Daesh. But that just didn't happen. So I absolutely understand this kind of dilemma. Um, I think um, in some ways, the, I, where we are now, though, is that, as I understand it, the current sort of way of phrasing it is that the Kurdistan region and its politicians, leaders, say we are obliged for the time being to be part of Iraq. We're obliged. Um, so, therefore, it's gonna, the focus is on trying to work that out as a process. Um, also, this point my esteemed colleague made on public sector payroll. Yes, with the Peshmerga, this ties into the way in which um, a large, you know, pet, you know, the public sector payroll enables this sort of patron-client relationship to continue. Uh, it's an important way of the uh, way uh, things have operated in this society up to now. Um, the issue of ghost Peshmerga, this is all uh, part of this reform process. So yeah, thank you for those questions. So we have just five minutes left, and we take maybe one or two questions more. So Dr. Hanna, please. Thank you, Hunar Issa from the American University of Kurdistan. And thank you for an interesting panel discussion that you had. Uh, as you're privy to, um, Kurdistan regional government has prioritized um, diversifying the economy. And uh, you know that uh, uh, the plans are on the way, ostensibly. Um, however, challenges are inevitable in the absence of infra infrastructure and policies. 90% uh, of the uh, revenue coming from uh, oil, and as you, Kakiwa just mentioned about it, 80% uh, of the budget goes to the uh, payroll. Uh, my question is uh, for uh, Professor Heshmati. Um, I don't know to what extent you're involved in, in terms of the research in this part of the world, but uh, what kind of advice, um, as a person who has an immense experience uh, in uh, uh, academia and industry has would give to this region in order to diversify its economy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hona. Thank you. Uh, Any from Dr. Oliri. Well, yes, the lady. As a graduate student, I would like to uh, ask Dr. Abdussana. Uh, my question is, um, like, why our people often like depend on the government for jobs? 
and not like businesses, like private sectors. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, so our last question, maybe, well, two hands. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he has the, the mic. Okay, please keep it short. Spas. Spas, Mr. Wan Gardim Lesieno, کمالی مدنی من هیل لماوی لسنوری هریمی کردستان لهمان کاتیجا باورانبر باوی در توی زانکو من نزدیکی صدو دال و صدو بیست هزار در توی زانکو منه که ما امناو مال نه لغمیک روزیک دتاقیت او یعنی اما در توی زانکو منه با بیکار لامل کرتی تایبر هم لکرتی گشتیم و داخل هریمی کردستان ایش که عبدالسلام آماده باشته که کبلا موزور گرینگا هریمی کردستان است بوده ترانزیت ای مادی هوشبار لنوان Turkey and Iran. Between Syria and Shamsina, I have a lot of things that I have to say. I have to say that 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 I have من دعوت که عبدالسلام دکم اما به بیت پروژه ای که روانگاش کاری لسه بکری. سپاس. سپاس. زور سپاس. دکتر شاهین. اول دو ماهی. Last question. Just to get the privilege to ask a question, Dr. Hashmati. Just adding up to what Dr. Hener said. Pretty much he said the question, but I want your advice, Dr. On what we should prioritize on. What industry should we go to diversify our economy? Agriculture, where to start basically? Uh, to, in a way that, like Abdul Salam said, not to be on the paper, not a project, just something that a project could be done. It's doable. Please, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, Professor. Thank you for, thank you for all questions. Uh, very interesting. Uh, my first study about Kurdistan was about a model for industrial development. I can't tell you what I suggested. It was about 12, 13 years ago, but no one listened to me. What I had to start, suggested, was to start with mining. Mining gives you raw material for construction of infrastructure and building. So we did not develop mining. We imported material to build one million houses and infrastructure. Now we have infrastructure and housing, but we cannot even maintain it is not a productive investment. So if you start with mining, in parallel, industry develops, services develop, and agriculture also take advantage of this technological development. So that's why, in my view, we have gone completely wrong way. Now, how can we correct it? One way is, I suggested you, high civil servant examination. Our nominated uh, general directors, ministers, or whatever it is, high key positions, there is about 500 in society, they are not probably capable of managing development that is uh, evidence-based. Probably we need high civil servant examination, so many can do business without any civil servant examination, but others who are decision makers, who are building a future, they go through this examination. And that will help women problem also, because in competition, women also can participate. So there are many things that are not right, but many things also we have achieved. My problem is not what we have done wrong in the past. My problem is future. And for future, you need to deal with urbanization. You need to deal with migration to cities outside. You need to deal with population growth you need to deal with aging, and you need to deal with environment. There is no one who talks about these kind of issues. And those are the key challenges that any government is, is facing in future. So good governance, effective institutions. How do we achieve them? High civil servant examination to give the task to people who are able to deal with these issues. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Any comment? 
ሰለስተ ሂዋ ዶክተር ማውስታ ቦ አውሮ ኤማሌሬነ ሲ አገር ሀቦይና ቦ ሞዙይ ታይናቱ ሁኩማቱ ሞዙይ ኢክቲሳዱ አዋና በታይበት ያ ቢትል ለገል በረስም ራስ ነው አማይ ቃዚ መኸብራት ሽቴከ ያኒ ዞ ዘሩራ በራንበሪ በራንጋር በቢን ሞዙይ ይሽክርድኑ አዋና ዲሳ ሱዋሊክ ሙሽተረክ ሲያሊክ ሙሽተረክ ቡ አቅሊያቴኪ ማውሩስ ማንሀያ ከኢክቲሳድ ደውለ ራይዒ ቡ ናውት ማንሀያ ደውለ ማንዲ ናውት ናውት ፔንጅ ለሳት ከዛ አዋና بيشتريش بوي مهات وكو موروثي كو عقليته تا استا وكولتورا ما هو حكومه دوله من دا با بارمان بداتي ماشي يقول لي اي انتخابي لا مالي خود دان شمنده بارد دي يعني تا وراد فكري كي استراتيجي ما نبو بو موضوع احترامي للمقامات وعاده او دوله ثانيه كبيال رينتر ستيت الدول الريعيه اجر اغان لخويا النبي تطوير مهارات نكن نخوشي هولندا كي داتش ديزيز كي عند غريتن او ايما العراق ولا كردستان توشي داتش ديزيز بون چونكا نويك مان هي هالغري بروانا مي لباشين حالات دا اكاديمي نا تيوري باشا بالام لبازاري كاري لوكالي منافسنيه تشجا انترناشونال او بتايبتي بومروفي انترناشونال سيتيزن يستا دو موضوع تعينات دواينا وتكال من تفهم دا كام اقتصاد حركه نبو اوانا وفاحزاب سياسي حاكم او كاتا ويسيان حركيك بخن اقتصاد فتعينات يا داس بيكر شو كحكومات دوله منترين جهاز بو تايستاش وغورترين محرك اقتصاد وسياسه وكلتور الى اخره فتعينات يا انكرد تحرك اقتصادي دروس بيك شو كاقتصاد كبيران كسنايت عراق وكردستان استثمار بكت او باش راستك عذرك يا بلان باش يقتري هلا معاييري تعيين كرد معاييري حزبي بون وثواب عقاب لحكومات يقدر كثواب عقاب تيدانيه مهم تعيين دك متوب فلا براوه ترحل لك اداري دروس بو واستبو يا كيشه كان تحركي ذاتيه سي زمانات لقطاع حكومي تا استا لقال او كراتبي تقع تقاعدي بو شي وازا قطاع عرنما وانا زان شو هم انا ما بس ايش تو وهمه كما هو وتو كدريش خاينه ايش بك ايش نكي راتبي خوت هالورده غري زمانات لقطاع حكومي زياده لا زمانات لقطاع خاص قانون ايش هي لقانون العمل بلا خلق سي قيبينيه چونك او باري كي خلق كي اتو ايدا لا صندوق الضمان الاجتماعي كاتي كي خلق كي قلتي بارم بدي قلتي والله اخر شنك موضوع 11 بارمانا بارك انا ما رقم هي بلا مكاش ماني اي كابرا شلون متماني بمنيت لا موضوع الضمان الاجتماعي فقط طاع الخاص محتاج زماناته من تي دقم حكومه تست لا وضع كي باو شي وادنات واني تعيين بكد ومن زور جار قلتي ما قال استاش حكومه دز بتعينات بكد يجي لو كسانه كديجي او استم من امكان كان هالقري خمي لوانم شو كان انتحار بلام او معنى او انا هني تبي حكومات تنظيمي بازاري كارنكت هذه كارنه دوزيته ولا قطاع خاص لا قطاع مدني تحريكي بازار نكات هذه تري تنويع مصادر الاقتصاد وكبريز او دكتوراه يعني فر مخاصه لموضوع سياحه وموضوع زراعه كاوان اولويات ده بكار لسر اما بكت اجر دور بري ما كسعوديه رقم يك لجهان او خريكي مراجعات امارات بو همو وضع او خريكي اقتصاد المعرفه ومراجعات الاقتصاد الريعي بشتنو فيجني اوان برو اقاري كي تدشي تجارب نزيك معناها تجربه امريكا وبريطانيا يعني تجربه تركيا باشتر لما توان استفاد لبكين امارات قطر سعوديه بو همو وضع اوان ممكن ما او دروس انا لي ور بغرين فبي حكومه بيتن راسا ناتواني تعيين بكت بلا مسؤول لو تنظيمي بازار بكت ومنح بدات قرضي بتشوك بدات لسر عندك معايير شفاف وعادل نك معايير دروس يك دقه يك كومنت ام اي جست وود لايك تو تو ميك ذيس امبورتنت بوينت ذات موست اوف ذا تايم وين وي توك اباوت ديجيتال سيرفيسز اند ديتا وي ثينك is something completely diff- different from the governance or the administration or reforms i completely support uh, professor hishmati's uh, uh, suggestions for the diversification of the economy what we do right now is as i mentioned before one driver is data for decision making so right now we are creating databases and data upon which the right decision by knowledgeable people could be made using digital tools to be implemented for the greater good and for the, for a, for a better Kurdistan. Thank you so much. Thank you. final remarks. Please, Dr. Heyman, can you come to the floor? Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Heyman Hsomir Khan. I'm the director of the University of Kurdistan Center for Regional and International Studies. 
my opening remark is, of course, a reflection of the, op the, op the points and opinion discussed during the conference. And it's going to be a short one. Uh, contrary to the conventional wisdom about the democratic deficit, the topic that is very widespread now, most countries of the Middle East suffer from the fundamental problem over their national identity. It's a demand and the politics of resentment. More than a three-quarter of a century after the disintegration of Ottoman Empire, from whom most of the new states emerged, these states have been unable to define, project, and maintain a national identity that is both inclusive and, of course, representative. Speaking of our region, the Middle East is heterogeneous. It consists of numerous ethnic, religious, cultural, and linguistic minorities, yet they are not successful in evolving a national identity that reflects their heterogeneity. The soft power politics and the first panel was, was a kind of a definition of these terms. The problem is regional. I would say now it's a universal problem as well. Whether there are democracies in the region, evolve on democracies, Republican regimes, quasi-liberal monarchies, Islamic regimes. The region suf suffers from inability to recognize, integra in, in, integrate, and reflect its ethno-cultural diversity. With our exception, the Middle Eastern states have tried to impose an identity from above. Whether ideological, religious, this, dynastical, power-centric, these, these attempts and steps have invariably failed and have often resulted in schism and sectarian tensions. However, violence and instability seems to be linked to in a sense of injustice, not democracy, due to the economic and political exclusion, as well as to a weak or a predatory state that does not deliver for its citizens. The actual and perceived marginalization of important segments of society often provides a pretext for a resource to violence. For example, it could be argued that Daesh was able to grow a capitalizing on a perceived marginalization of a Sunni population in Iraq and Syria. The 2nd of October was the day of stability, which was related to the timing of our conference. The reason of adding region in our topic here is obvious. The country's borders are losing their sanctuaries, and there are many artificial, fragile states around us. Therefore, any tragic st steps toward stability from the QRG should not be mutually exclusive with Iraq and, of course, the elements of power politics in the region. ISIS and other elements of extremism will stand still for a, long, for a long time, unfortunately, here. It is a sad reality which should make the clergy even more vigilant. The conference tries to reiterate that the Kurdistan region is, a re is ready to resolve all outstanding issues with the Iraqi federal government in accordance with the, con with the Constitution, continue our, the bilateral cooperation. This is a pragmatic, forward-looking and reasonable solution. The public opinion, it seems to support this policy. I will finish with the Dr. Romanus keynote address that the KRG has always been extremely welcoming and tolerant to all kinds of groups and, and identi identities. The KRG is a truly a safe haven for all commu communities. In terms of foreign policy, the KRG has never been entangled in regional and power politics. The, the relationship between people and the government in, 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 the, in the federal, in the Kurdistan is in much better shape and fashion compared to the Baghdad, for example. You see a lot of social unrest in Baghdad now. And we can clearly see the current social unrest in Baghdad proves this fact. Last but not least, I would like to thank personally the panelists and their input. 
and the, what they call it, hidden soldiers, right? Hidden soldiers and behind the scenes who are responsible for organ organizing the second UKH conference. The academic co committee, the administrative committee, our wonderful volunteers, smart people, and, and, and Kurdistan should be pr uh, so proud of them. Just give them maybe five to 10 years. The uh, protocol office, the Kyrgyz protocol office, the chancellor's office, and of course, the chancellor himself. He was extremely helpful and supportive to this. I hope the proceedings of the conference become a way of policy recommendation to the Kurdistan regional government. The goal is to assist the KRG policymakers with objective scientific conclusion on the element of stability in Iraq and the region. The KRG was, is, and always will be an asset of the, of, and of course, a part of solution for the issues related to this very region, and of course, not a problem. Thank you, and it's been a pleasure to have you all to join us and in this event, and I hope you enjoy the event, and I hope you enjoy the meal as well. We're going to serve you with an exceptional lunch. Thank you again. Thanks for coming. <laughs>